Amigos, amigas, I come back to you today with another deck profile. And it's a deck that I haven't done in a long time, but it's a deck that I really wanted to revisit and I've been playtesting with this. I think the hand trap build, which is what I'm gonna be showing you guys today, is gonna be the best build for the deck right now. And the deck, of course, that I'm talking about is Trickstar. So Trickstar is a deck that I like, is one of the OG decks actually on the channel. And uh, one of the decks I used to play a lot when it first came out. I haven't played it in a long time and I wanted to update it for you guys. So here it is today. I'm excited to show it to you guys, but make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. So we are starting off with three Candina. This is something that's kind of inarguable to be honest with you. It's the best card in the deck. So it's your best normal summon, of course, right? So three Candina, I'm opting to play two Licorice, one Corobane, and then one Lily Bell. So the reason I'm only opting to play two here is because you need a lot more room for non-engine. And the way this deck wins now actually is, I mean, I guess it's always one like this, it's kind of like a control style deck. It's a deck that wants to do a lot of burn and then kind of just push like for the last bit of damage. That's kind of how the deck plays now with hand traps. But the reason I'm playing only two Licorice is because unlike before, even though Imperm and Valor and stuff still hurt this deck, people I don't think are on Valor as much. Maybe some of the Centurion builds, but typically I don't really care if you hit my Candina because I have so many other ways to cards now with all the new support and all the new, I guess, non-engine that's in the deck. And so two Licorice I think is just fine. And then just one Corobane and one Lily Bell. Now, Corbane, it actually has a very funny synergy that I'm gonna talk about a little bit later in the in the video. But this this being level five, just keep that in mind, okay? That's that's really important. But of course, one Lily Bell, you search it, you get a free special summon. I'm also playing three light stage and one terraforming. It's been a long time since Light Stage has been back at three, and Light Stage being at three is absolutely insane, right? So super consistent now. And one of the reasons I'm only playing two Licorice as well. Before you needed to play three when you only had one of this, but now that you have three uh, Light Stage, you can get away with two Licorice. So that's that for the field spells. And then of course, we're playing three Reincarnation. Like at the end of the day here, I'm just gonna say this because this is like an honorary Trickstar monster, even though it's a hand trap. This is a win con for you, right? And the fact that a deck has a win con like this is absolutely insane because you are able to resolve this so easily. And remember how I said earlier, oh, if my opponent uses Valor or something like that on my Candina, like I don't really care if Candina resolves as much. So that's because, that's because you play Thrust, which I'll get into that in a second. But Thrust can also search Reincarnation. It's a normal trap. So you have another way to search this, which is absolutely insane, right? So that's why I, I, I'm playing this. I mean, of course, you, if you're playing Trickstar, you have to be playing this, right? Because that's one of your main win conditions and one of the most broken ones in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But that's kind of it for the Trickstar lineup. And uh, that's that's all I'm playing. Very small lineup. I'll put the draws out here because I want to show you guys the hand trap lineup. So like I said earlier, of course, we're playing the three draw. We're also playing three Ash, three Imperm. And then this is a card that I chose to play, 3 DD Crow. And the reason I chose to play DD Crow is because against so many different decks in the meta, DD Crow is just really, really good. It's good into Unchained. It's good into pretty much everything except, I would say, Centurion. It's like not horrible in Centurion. It's not great in Centurion though. And I consider playing Ghost Ogre, but Ghost Ogre, the problem with that is it's only really good into Centurion, right? So I wanted something a little bit more versatile. DD Crow, of course, is really good into pretty much everything else in the meta right now. So that's why I'm deciding to play DD Crow. And then lastly, a card that's not a hand trap, but a card that I feel like you need to be playing in Trickstar is Fenrir. Uh, this is a card that, again, keep in mind, this is a rogue deck at the end of the day. So going second, of course, you have the hand traps, but you also have Fenrir to help you break boards. And Fenrir, of course, going first is really good because it helps you kind of set up your boards, gives you another form of disruption, right? So this could be another hand trap, but I really like Fenrir in this deck. It also helps you push for damage, which is really important, especially when you're burning your opponent for so much, and this is just that kind of extra push of damage, right? And then for the spell cards here, we're playing consistency cards, of course. So three pot of prosperity, you have to be playing this in this deck. You don't care. So the thing is with prosperity is you're not burning your opponent on your turn anyway you're mostly burning your opponent on your opponent's turn. So you just need to see the prosperity going first. Of course, this deck wants to go first. You want to see the prosperity going first so that you're able to kind of see all your combo pieces, see cards like Reincarnation, see your Candina, etc., etc. Because then one, you can get the Droll Reincarnation combo off. But two, even if you don't get that off, you can get to a lot of your other card boosts really, really powerful, right? So three prosperity, I would not not play this deck with this. You don't really care about the half damage because you're not going for OTK and use with this deck. This is very much of a control-based deck. Then we're playing three thrust, which is crazy consistency for this deck. Not only does to search a lot of the most broken cards like talents over here or change of heart over here or feather duster or a card that i like playing instant fusion which i'll talk about this in a second but it searches all of these cards and it searches your reincarnation which is absolutely insane right and being able to do all that is just is just crazy because one consistency obviously like i said again if you get Valored or something on your Candina or get hit with an Ash Blossom, you can go Thrust, search your Reincarnation if you have access to talents and whatnot. I mean, 
Talon's going first is cool because you can rip a card out of your opponent's hand, but if you have the reincarnation droll combo, you're always gonna go for that, right? And then of course going second thrust is really good because you can search Talon, search Change of Heart, search Harpy's Feather Duster, and it's just absolutely insane, right? So the consistency in this deck is crazy because you have the draw power in prosperity, or I guess not the draw power, but you know, getting cards to your hand with prosperity, but then you also have the thrust as well, which is really nice. And then lastly, for the last card of the deck, we're playing one called by the grave. I just decided to play one. We're playing, I think, 41. I think the main deck is 41 cards here. Um, and I'm playing no call by the grave, of course, because you know, dodging hand traps is nice. But uh, yeah, that's it for the main deck. And I want to kind of talk about Instant Fusion here when we get into the extra deck real quick. I think Instant Fusion is absolutely insane. You guys can play Ready Fusion as well, which I considered playing. I just thought this was a really cool other extender. And so I'm just going to keep this to the side for now because I want to show you guys why it can be really good. But moving on to the extra deck, we are playing, of course, the One Holy Angel, One IP Mascarina, One Phoenix, One Unicorn. Um, if you guys have SP Little Knight, play SP Little Knight. I don't have SP Little Knight. But uh, Phoenix can be swapped for SP Little Knight, or Unicorn can be SP Little Knight. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're playing the Unicorn. Of course, if you guys have SP, like, like I said, you guys can play SP. One Axis Code. We're playing one Anima and one Lingaribo. So I know some of the Rescue Ace builds play Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. So this is for the Ibli thing, so you don't lose to Ibli. And that's kind of why I'm playing this. Keep in mind, this extra deck, you have a lot of space in this extra deck to kind of play fun stuff. And Anima is really good because we're playing a Thousand Eyes Restrict. Bro. It's 2023 and we're playing Thousand Eyes Restrict. And you guys might be like, why are you playing Thousand Eyes Restrict? It makes no sense. Why would you play this? This is 2020. It's not a go format. This is 2023 format. But it's so good because going second, you can use Instant Fusion. So, so, so if you already open like your board breakers like Talents or something like that, and you can go Thrust, you can go Instant Fusion to summon Thousand Eyes Restrict, take an opponent's monster. Now, if they have a negate for it, they have a negate for it. But then you can make Thousand Eyes Restrict into Relinquished Anima, and you can take another monster. So these act kind of like as board breakers, which is insane. So Instant Fusion, not only is it the card that kind of helps you extend, it's a board breaker for you. It's also a card that can summon Millennium Eyes Restrict, which means that if you're summoning Millennium Eyes Restrict, uh, and you start off your combos doing that, you're not afraid of hand traps, so it protects you from your hand traps. It also summons Panzer Dragon for you, which gives you access to rank five plays with Corbane because it's a light level five, which is really good because you guys will see the rest of the extra deck. So you can make rank fives with this. And guess what else you can make with Corbane? Level 10 Synchros. Legit Theseus being a level five tuner means that you can use your level five Corbane with your level five tuner to make Baron de Floor. You can make a level 10 right here, of course. So Baron de Floor, again, another spicy card you guys can play in this deck. And you have all of this access to Anima, to Restrict, to Baron, all of this, just because of this one card. So I really like Instant Fusion. That's kind of why I was talking about Instant Fusion later. It has a lot of cool applications. So Baron, of course, you can make uh, Volcasaurus. I like to make this for time. If you guys don't know Volcasaurus, you can pop a monster your opponent controls, you burn them. So going second, uh, you can use this and then kind of beat them in time. Of course, going first, Trick Star is really good into time. But if you're forced to go second, this is kind of where you want to go. Play these as well is a rank five that you guys can make with uh, your Panzer Dragon. It's really powerful. And then, of course, one Zeus. So because you have so much space in this extra deck, Prosperity is not actually that hard to use in this deck because if you are starting your combos and you're like, okay, hey, well, I'm not getting to Instant Fusion right now, you can get rid of a lot of the Instant Fusion targets, right? Especially if you're going second, you're like, okay, I'm going second. I know I'm not gonna use Panzer Dragon. I know I'm not gonna use Millennium as Restrict. All these kind of cards you can, can get rid of. If you're going first, then you can just get rid of some of the other cards as well, right? So you guys can see with the extra deck, there's a lot of space. The only things I would say you have to be playing are some of the generic Mink 2s, because of course, if you're going Talents to steal your opponent's monster or change your heart, you wanna be able to use their monster as like fodder, right? So that's it for the extra deck. 15 cards, of course, and uh, you guys can play around with it though. This is not like by any means like you have to be playing these cards. I just think they're the most generic cards and the best cards you can play. Uh, but then for the side deck, again, side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference, but this is just kind of like what I feel would be really good or synergize really well with this deck. So three Gamma Seal and one Pankratops, of course, going second, you wanna be able to win. Uh, this is really good against Purely as well, right? Uh, Purely is a pretty tough matchup. So Gamma Seal, Pankratops, uh, three evenly matched. Like I said, you don't care about the battle phase. You don't care about OTK. If you're resolving evenly matched against something like Rescue Ace or Labyrinth, it becomes really, really powerful. You're winning the game. Same thing with Lightning Storm here. You can search it off Thrust. You can search this off Thrust as well if you're going second. Just cards that you need to be blowing out your opponent because this deck has a tough time breaking boards, essentially, right? So you need to be playing these cards that kind of break boards. Speaking of breaking boards, I'm playing three Herald of the Abyss. Um, again, Purely is the hardest matchup through testing. Uh, Purely is the hardest matchup for this deck. So Herald of the Abyss is one of those cards that just gets rid of Purely. You guys can play Book of Moon or something like that as well. The problem with Book of Moon or Book of Eclipse is once you eclipse your opponent, if you don't have something like Fenrir, it's kind of actually hard to break the board. So it's like, okay, you can go Eclipse or Book of Moon, book them, 
But if you're not getting rid of that card, it doesn't really matter. So that's why I just decided to go Herald of the Abyss. And Herald of the Abyss is kind of good into other matchups as well if it needs to be, right? And then lastly, if you're going first and you're siding in to go first, you play 3D Barrier against Manadium. Even against decks like uh, Centurion, this could be really good. Um, and yeah, purely as well. So the barrier also searchable off thrust, searchable off thrust, searchable off thrust. Now, even though they're all searchable, you guys might be wondering why aren't you just playing one of each because you can search them. It's because these cards are too impactful to just play one of and then hope to see the thrust and then hope that thrust is live. Do you see what I'm trying to say? That's why I'm playing videos. But again, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. If you guys enjoyed today's video though, make sure to like and subscribe. That's, that's it for the deck profile. I think, uh, Trickstar, this is like a new way to play Trickstar, the hand trap build. There's a very controlled build of Trickstar and then being able to slowly push for damage where your opponent doesn't even realize they're that low on life and you can be like, boom, I win now. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Shout out to Alpha for being the best camera man on YouTube. But with that, that's what I gotta say. Thank you. Are you gonna make Synchro Trickstar? Am I gonna make Synchro Trickstar? You could, but it's not good. You know what I want to do? I was testing Runic Trickstar. Runic Trickstar is actually low-key spicy. I was testing it, low-key spicy. But uh, you just kind of was going second. It's really cool going first though. Ew.